House of Squibb presents Academy Awards. Every week, Squibb brings you Hollywood's finest. The great picture plays, the great actors and actresses, techniques and skills chosen from the honor roll of those who have won or been nominated for the famous Golden Oscar of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. And now, E.R. Squibb and Sons, manufacturing chemist to the medical profession since 1858, bring you the distinguished actor Henry Fonda in Young Mr. Lincoln with Ward Bond. Young Mr. Lincoln, as Best Original Story of the Year, was nominated for the 1939 Academy Award. Mr. Fonda, as Best Actor of the Year, was nominated for the 1940 Academy Award. This is a story about a long, lean lawyer named Abraham Lincoln. A young man full of droll stories and deep, quick laughter. A story of Abe Lincoln in Springfield, Illinois. A fine summer afternoon at the fair is over. The barbecue fires glow red now in the darkness, and families are rounding up their children and seeking their wagons for the lazy ride back to town. Suddenly, a woman screams. <coughs> the rush of running men, blood spilled on a dark meadow, and a hushed whisper of murder. The pioneer mother standing stark against the breeze, staring at her two sons. Two boys, suddenly strangers, standing over the body of a third lying stabbed. Death had come under the dark skies over Illinois. He's dead. Who done it? Them fellas, Sheriff. Them Clay brothers. They was fighting with this here scrub white and they cut him. There's the knife they done it with. Which one of you Clay boys done this? Me. No, me. Come on, let's take him out of here. I want the truth now. Which one of you cut him? I did. That ain't so. I done it. I tell you, it was me. He was going for Adam with a gun and One then... of you's lying. Now, which one is it? All right. Anybody see it? I reckon I did. Who are you? Their mother. Well, which one was it? I'm not saying. Well, it don't make no difference anyhow. Under the law, they're both equally guilty. Come on now, you're both under arrest. Palmer Cass, I appoint you temporary deputy. Help me get these two fellas down to the jail. Come on, you two. Let's go. Who are these fellas? Never saw them around here before. Uh, strangers around here. Folks ain't got no right to come to town and start cutting people up. Two of them jumping for us, clubbing, stabbing them in the back, too. I said they ought to have a touch of rope. Rope? Yes, sir. That's the medicine for them. Hey, come on, fellas. Get a rope and hurry. Come on, hurry. No. No, they can't do that to my boys. They can't do that to my boys. Come on, ma'am, we have to hurry. Those fellas mean what they say about lynching your sons. Leave me alone. What do you want? Who are you? My name's Lincoln, ma'am. Abe Lincoln, I'm your lawyer, ma'am. Come on, we better hurry and get out of that jail. <laughs> the jail door, Sheriff. Let me out of here. I can't, Palmer. They've got to break in. Don't be a fool. They'll get us, too. Can't help it. They'll have to bust in first. We're going to get those murderers, Sheriff. They ain't got a chance. I can't open the door, boys. The law's got to protect these clay fellas and give them a trial. Blow up the jail. Get powder. Powder. Open up, Sheriff, or we'll get you. Hold on, man. Hold on and listen to me. Get out of our way, Lincoln. We're busting in. By jing, I said, listen to me, and by jing, you will. No, we ain't going to listen. 
That's better. Now, gentlemen, I'm not here to make any speeches. All I got to say is I can lick any man here hands down. We know you, Abe Lincoln. Come on, man, let's get him. Hold on, Buck. I thought I'd find that big mouth of yours around here telling people what to do. I'm Buck, all right. The big buck of this lick. Then come on and whet your horns. What's holding you? <laughs> Maybe some of you other gentlemen like to take Buck's place. Uh, me? I can lick you myself. Is that a fact, neighbor, or just your notion? Get away from there, Lincoln, or we'll give it to you, too. Well, well, if it's not Bill Gentry. First time I ever heard of you trying to break into jail, Bill. I thought you were too busy trying to break out. <laughs> Shut up! Go on, let's get him! Howdy, Clarence. Last time I saw you, you were heading for the rock pile for beating up your wife. <laughs> now, gentlemen, all joking aside, let's look at this matter from my side. You all know I'm just a fresh lawyer trying to get ahead, but some of you boys act like you want to do me out of my first clients. <laughs> Go ahead, Abe. Go on and talk. I'm not saying you fellas aren't right. Maybe these clay boys do deserve to hang. But with me handling their case, it looks like you won't have much to worry on that score. <laughs> All I ask is to have it done with some legal pomp and show. Yeah, but what about our side of it? We've been to a heap of trouble not to have at least one hanging. Sure you have. And if these boys had more than one life, I'd say go ahead. A little hanging mightn't do them any harm. But the sort of hanging you boys had given them would be so permanent. <laughs> the trouble is that when men start taking the law into their own hands, they're just as apt in the confusion and fun to hang somebody who's not a murderer as somebody who is. Then, first thing you know, they're hanging one another from pure devilment. Till it gets to the place a man can't pass a tree or... Look at a rope without feeling uneasy. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. We seem to lose our heads at such times as this and do things together we'd be mighty ashamed to do by ourselves. For instance, you take Jeremiah Carter yonder. There's not a more decent, God-fearing man in Springfield than Jeremiah Carter. And I wouldn't be surprised if when he goes home, he takes down a certain book and looks into it. Maybe you'll just happen to hit on these words. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. <coughs> That's all I got to say, friends. Good night. <laughs> Mr. Lincoln. Yes, Miss Clay? I ain't one to talk much, but after what you just done for us tonight, saving my boys from them... them... Now, now, save your thanks. Here, I'll give you a hand with those mules of yours. Whoa, mules, whoa. Of course, you know I'm just sort of a jack leg lawyer without much experience at this sort of business, but as long as you want me, I'll do the best I can. Still, maybe you'd feel a lot safer if my partner was here. Or you could get a hold of Steve Douglas. I hear that silver tongue of his can be mighty useful with a jury. We don't know nothing about lawyers and things like that. Well, I'll do the best I can. You know, my mother, Nancy Hanks, would have been just about your age if she'd lived. I have an idea she'd been a whole lot like you, too. A whole lot like you, ma'am. Thank you. Abigail Clay, which one of your boys killed Scrub White? I can't tell you. I can't. But I'm your lawyer. You can trust me. I don't want to scare you, but we've got a fight on our hands. I got to know what I'm doing. I can't tell you, Mr. Lincoln. It'd be like Choosing between them. What do you suppose made them both say they done it? 
Matt said it because he's the oldest. And Adam said it because Matt's got a wife and a baby, I reckon. There's a lot of people who'd like to see those boys hang. I know. But I just can't. No, I reckon you can't. Take it easy riding home, Abigail, and watch out for ruts. Get up, mules. Cass, take the stand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. What's your name? J. Palmer Cass. You knew Scrub White? Sure, Mr. Felder. I knew him. The day he was killed, you'd been with him? All day. Do you recall where and under what circumstances you first saw the defendants? Well, we run into them at the pie contest. Scrub kind of took a fancy to one of their gals and... Her fella got sore. They followed us over near the tug of war and wanted to fight. What did Scrub White do then? He just laughed and asked them what they wanted to fight with. Knives, pistols, or fists. How did he ask that, jokingly? Yeah, he was laughing all the time. Tell the jury what happened then. Well, Scrub and me had a little argument, and he went off by himself. Next thing I, heard, uh, I knew, I heard a shot and some shouting, and I run back and Found Scrub lying on the ground with those two fellows standing over him. And the knife was on the ground between them? Yes, sir. And where was Scrub's pistol? In his holster. So it went off then while he was trying to get it out of his holster? Yes, sir. Guess it did. Thank you. Your witness, Mr. Lincoln. What's the J stand for in your name? John. Then why the J. Palmer Cass? Why not John P. Cass? Well, I... Anything the matter with John P.? No, but... Has J. Palmer Cass anything to conceal? No. Then what do you part your name in the middle for? I got a right to call myself anything I please. All right, but if you don't mind, I'll just call you Jack Cass. <laughs> order, order in the court. Your Honor, I object to this ridiculous line of questioning. Mr. Lincoln's clownishness may win him a laugh from his friends, but I assure you his entire game of buffoonery is... Lost on this jury. Stick to the point, Mr. Lincoln. I'll do my best, Your Honor. Now, J. Palmer Cass, you say you and Scrub White had a little argument. What was this argument about? I'd rather not say. Oh, you'd rather not say. Well, J. Palmer, suppose I told you I'd rather you did say. All right, if you want to know. We were arguing about politics. Well, that's something new to argue about. What kind of politics? Well, I've learned different now. But I said that I figured that you had more sense about politics than Steve Douglas. And Scrub, he got mad as a wet hen and said you didn't. <laughs> order, order. Yeah, well, looks like I scratched up a snake then. I reckon we can allow all you said to go in. Step down. Your Honor, I'd like to call Abigail Clay back to the stand. Abigail Clay! You love your boys, don't you, Mrs. Clay? You would like to save their lives if you could. Uh, you were present the night Scrub White was killed, weren't you? I saw him fight. Now, don't be afraid of me. I'm not a bloodthirsty man. I'm prepared to offer you the life of one of your sons, provided you tell us which of your boys stabbed and killed Scrub White. Yeah. Order, order. I can't. Mrs. Clay, you believe in God, don't you? Do you believe that if you take a solemn oath in the sight of God and on his holy Bible, you are bound to speak the truth? Yes, but I can't tell you. I can't. Your Honor, I protest against the prosecution's attempt to force this woman to decide which of her two sons will live and which will die. I have seen Abigail Clay exactly three times in my life, gentlemen, yet I know everything there is to know about her. I know her because I've seen hundreds of women just like her, working in the fields, suffering over some sick and helpless child, women who say little and do much, who ask nothing and give all. And I tell you that such a woman would never answer the question that's been put to her here. Never. 
I'd rather, Mrs. Clay, see both your sons taken from you than to see you break your heart by saving one at the expense of the other. So don't tell them. Order! Order! May it please the court to spare the jury any more of these harrowing outbursts, the state will withdraw the question. No doubt Mr. Lincoln will be glad to hear that Mrs. Clay was not the only eyewitness to the murder of Scrub White. Order! Order! Recall Mr. J. Palmer Cass to the stand. J. Palmer Cass! Mr. Cass, where were you at the time Scrub White was killed? I was about, uh, well, a uh, hundred yards away, I reckon. You saw the killing with your own eyes? Yes, sir, I saw it. Why didn't you tell us this before? Nobody asked me. Have you told anybody else about this? No, sir. Why not? Well, I didn't want to help get anybody hung. And why do you tell us now? Because it looks to me like both of them's going to get hung. How could you see so clearly from a distance of 100 yards at 11 o'clock at night? It was moon bright. I see. Moon bright. And you clearly saw which boy pulled the knife? Yes, sir. The defendants will stand up. Now tell us, Mr. Cass, which defendant stabbed and killed Scrub White? That one. The big one, Adam Clay. Your Honor, the state rests. Quiet! Quiet! This court is adjourned until 10 tomorrow morning. Take the prisoners away. In just a moment, you will hear the second part of Academy Award. This is the time of year when a vacation tan helps to focus more attention on your smile. And that's one reason why Squib Dental Cream is an important part of so many well-made vacation plans. For this quality dentifrice, a member of the great family of Squib products, helps to uncover all the natural brilliance of your smile. That's because the polishing agent in Squib Dental Cream is one of the safest, softest, yet most effective known to dental science. And you will like Squib Dental Cream for its refreshing flavor, cool as a shady bed of mint. It's refreshing action that leaves your teeth and gums feeling gloriously clean. For Squib Dental Cream is three ways refreshing. You can taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. Something to remember when you're buying a dentifrice. Ask for Squib Dental Cream. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. You Squib Dental Cream. Before continuing with part two of Young Mr. Lincoln, we want to thank 20th Century Fox for making this story available. Henry Fonda and Ward Bond will soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, My Darling Clementine. And now the House of Squibb presents part two of Academy Award, starring Henry Fonda in Young Mr. Lincoln with Lord Bond. you're playing there, Mr. Lincoln. Why, hello, Judge. Mighty pleasant to see you this evening. Doggone it, Lincoln. This is against all my principles, but I want to talk to you as an older man. Go ahead, Judge. I'm listening. What I mean to say, Dad, blame it, is don't you think you ought to get some older lawyer with more experience to help you out tomorrow? Are you suggesting I retire, Judge, or just take a back seat? I'm just suggesting that if you want me to, I'll speak to Steve Douglas. I'm sorry, Judge, but I'm one of those fellows who don't believe in swapping horses in the middle of the stream. Then at least change your plea, accept sentence for your guilty client, and I'll guarantee that the state will be lenient with the other. That's a mighty tempting offer. Mighty tempting. 
But I'm afraid it won't work. But, man, you'll send both defendants to the gallows as so sure as the moon sets. Maybe, but just the same, that's the way it's got to be. Good night, Judge. <laughs> Order in the court. Your Honor, the defense would like at this time to cross-examine the last witness for the state, J. Palmer Cass. J. Palmer Cass, take the stand. Mr. Cass, yesterday you identified Adam Clay as the killer of Scrub White. That's right. He did it. You're sure of that? Sure, I'm sure. Well, I just wanted to know... Now, you say you were about 100 yards from the scene of the fight? Just about. Are you familiar with the land over there? Yes, sir. What's the nature of it? Well, there's a little clearing and... Any trees? A few. Where are they? Between the clearing and the fairgrounds. And you saw through these trees? No. I was already through the trees when I saw them fighting. Oh, I see. I suppose the clearing was lit up by light from the barbecue fires? No, sir. Then how'd you see so well? I told you it was moon bright. Oh, moon bright. If uh, if it hadn't been moon bright, you couldn't have seen 100 yards, could you? No, sir. But you did see it. I told you I did. And the the only reason you're telling us this now is that you feel sorry for one of the defendants. I don't want to see them both get hung. Well, I guess you wouldn't lie about a thing like that. Step down. Oh, Mr. Cass, I forgot. There's just one more question I'd like to ask you. You needn't bother to come all the way back to the stand. Cass, what'd you have against Scrub White? Well, nothing. Then what'd you kill him for? Uh, I I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. Look at this book. It's Gowdy's Almanac. Go on, look at it. Look at page 12, the night of the murder. See what it says about the moon? That the moon was only in its first quarter that night and set at 1021, 40 minutes before the killing. So it couldn't have been moon bright, could it? No, sir. Order, order. You lied, didn't you, Cass? You weren't trying to save these boys' necks, were you? You were trying to save your own, weren't you? Well, come on, weren't you? No, no. Then why'd you lie? I didn't lie. You did lie. That's just as plain as a nose on your face. But why? Come on, tell us. What made you tell a lie about that moonlight? I don't know what you're talking about. Then I'll tell you what I'm talking about. You lied because you and Scrub White had a fight. But it wasn't about politics. You never mentioned politics. That was your first lie, wasn't it? It was politics, it was. No, I, I you were was. fighting about something else. Maybe it was money. You owed him money, or he owed you. No, no. Maybe he was getting a little graft here and there, and you wanted to be in on it. No, sir. I... Well, what was it? Come on. It was one of those things, something that made you want to get rid of Scrub. You're crazy. He was my friend. Maybe, but just the same, you lied. Now, why? Why did you say you saw what happened when you didn't see it? All right, I'll tell you what happened. You heard a row. You saw a fight starting and you ran over there and you saw that Scrub was still living. And right there on the ground, you saw the knife that Matt Clay dropped. And you bent down and picked up the knife. No, no. And your body hid what you were doing. And then you stabbed him. You stabbed him in the back and killed him. No, I... I, And these two boys, Matt and Adam, each knew he didn't do it. And therefore, each thought the other did. And their mother, Abigail. She saw the knife in Matt's hand, but she couldn't say so without putting a rope around his neck. But you, you killed him, and you lied, and your lie tripped you up. Your crude, cold-blooded lie that was going to cover up a crime, you'd committed yourself. The lie you can't deny now, can you? Answer me. You did kill him, didn't you? Didn't you? I tell you, I didn't mean to. I'd been drinking and... We had a little fight, but I didn't mean to. Scrub, Scrub was my friend, I tell you. And I, That's I enough. Only... You're a witness, Mr. Felder. Oh, I get Arthur, get your hands off of me. Let me go. I didn't mean to kill him. I didn't mean to kill him. Well,
Well, I reckon there's nothing holding you people now. No, sir. There sure ain't. But you boys better not go around thinking you killed anybody again. You'll get yourselves in trouble. Goodbye, Matt. Take care of yourself. Yes, sir. I'm a gonna. Mr. Lincoln. Goodbye, Abigail. We ain't got much, but after what you done... Why, thank you, ma'am. I hope all my clients will pay me as fast as you just did. Now, be careful of them mules going home. Watch out for ruts. Get up, mules. Go on, Mr. Go on, Mr. Lincoln. Oh, there you are, Abe. I had a heck of a time finding you. Oh, evening, Judge. Abe, I wanted to tell you I thought you pulled a brilliant piece of strategy today, and I'm sorry about trying to talk you into taking on an older lawyer, but... I didn't know you had that ace up your sleeve. Nothing to worry about, Judge. I might have done the same thing if I were in your boots. How did you happen to hit on Cass as the guilty one? Well, Judge, I... I got to thinking about Cass when he insisted on parting his name in the middle. Struck me he might have reasons for wanting to be secretive about himself. And, and when I found a cop of the Almanac, that cinched it. Where are you heading, Lincoln? Oh, just thought I'd walk up the hill a piece, Judge. The boys will be looking for you. What'll I tell them? Oh, just tell them I got the smell of the country in my nose. And I think I'll go on a spell from here. During the years when young Lincoln was practicing law, another young American was practicing medicine with the same hatred for all that was slipshod and untrustworthy. The young man was Dr. Edward R. Squibb, and he fought single-handed to supply the medical world with something difficult to find and urgently needed, drugs of unfailing uniformity, purity, efficacy. From his tiny laboratory, the beginning of the great house of Squibb, came not only the first uniformly safe, pure ether, but something even rarer, a new way of working in the production of medicines, a quest for perfection that was to continue unceasingly. It was a hope fulfilled for other doctors and surgeons of Dr. Squibb's own time. We look upon your cause as our cause, they wrote, your enterprises as the inauguration of a new era, and yourself as the exponent of the great principles of truth and humanity in array against dishonest stupidity. So began that continuing service in the cause of human health, which for generation after generation has made Squibb a name you can trust. Next Wednesday, another great picture. The House of Squibb will present Academy Award starring Douglas Fairbanks Jr. and Virginia Bruce in The Prisoner of Zenda. Today's performance of Young Mr. Lincoln was written for radio by Frank Wilson with an original musical score composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Our producer-director is D. Engelbach. Henry Fonda appeared through the courtesy of RKO, producers of Till the End of Time. This is Hugh Brundage bidding you good night until next Wednesday at the same time when you're invited to listen again to Academy Award, presented by the House of Squibb, a name you can trust. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcast.